Hey everybody, welcome to End of the Lair. As promised, we're going to talk about uh, vocals today. We won't cover everything today, so what we will cover will be pretty fast-paced, try and keep up, but uh, we will go into depth depending on your questions and comments. We'll take this episode and expand it over several episodes of ITL just to uh, make sure we cover the things you want to know. Um, we're going to break down a vocal and I'm going to show you kind of some philosophical stuff about how I approach it and uh, some specific plugins. Uh, obviously the first thing we do is we check out the vocal. I'm going to play it for you raw one time. Here we go. You the weirdo. You the weirdo. Okay, we're lucky. That's, that sounds pretty good already. My friend Brent did a good job on that. Um, one of the things I listen for is uh, the S's. The S's that on this are pretty good, so we're not going to really worry about that too much, although I'll show you a couple of ways I deal with that. Uh, the other thing that comes to mind is um, it's tracked really well. It's not over-compressed. Uh, we're lucky. The S's, uh, there's a couple of ways to approach those. Shouty, you the weirdo. Shouty, you the weirdo. In Pro Tools, S's always look like little footballs, so you can see how you can see how this has got space, and this little compact thing would be an S. One of the things I do with S's is I just draw them down. Uh, so this would be. Shouty, you the weirdo. Now, if we if we if we want to uh, use a DS, or we you know that's a whole different story. But uh, I'm going to nuke this for now. We're going to come back to that. Uh, this is a, an, an equalizer that, uh, that I had used on this. I'm going to get rid of this. So right now what we're hearing is this. Just a little compression. You the weirdo. Now, first thing that I want to do is, is add a little super top and then add a, a, get those S's a little sparkly. So here we go. Shouty you the weirdo. Shouty you the weirdo. And then, and then, because of, of there's there's guitars in this track. Remember, we used this track in uh, episode what, Zan three? Two or three. Two yeah. or three. Um, um, I'm gonna add a little bit of guts to compete with with what's in the track. Shouty, you the weirdo. Shouty. And then uh, a little bit lower. Shouty, you the weirdo. Shouty. I might be adding too much of this. We can pull that back a little of the two and a half k. Shouty, you the weirdo. Without these two. Shouty, you the weirdo. So don't think of those as frequencies. Think of those as energy. That uh, that 1K to 3K range is, is to me, that's the power. That's the energy. That's where you're going to be able to compete with other things in the track. The, the upper stuff, the 10K, 15K in this case, 10K, that's your finesse. That's, 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 that's that, that uh, classiness. And then the low end, if you're doing a rock song, you probably want a little less low end than what I'm going to use. But I, I, I'm, 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 I'm using on this song, as you remember from last time, a lot, a lot more low end than you might find on a typical rock song. So we might need to enforce that. So we're going to do a little 200 and a little, a little 100. Shouty, you the weirdo. Shouty, you the weirdo. Okay, now here's without it. The second... You can sure use the weirdo, sure use the weirdo. The second time I'll bring the EQ in. First time without it. Shouty, you the weirdo. Shouty, you the weirdo. Damn, I'm good. All right. Um, now, uh, I get asked a lot, do you compress before uh, your EQ or after your EQ? Uh, what I like to do, now everybody does things a little bit different, so... There's no hard, hard rules about this. Um, I like to do my cuts before my compressor. Now, in this case, I'm not going to do that, but uh, normally if I've got a, a vocal that doesn't sound good, I'll cut before the compressor so that my frequencies that are sticking out won't control the compressor, and then I like to boost after the compressor. In this case, this vocal is recorded so well, we're not going to do too much cutting. It's just all boost, if, as you can see. And... Um, um, the compressor I'm using for, 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 for illust uh, to illustrate this is the uh, Fairchild. So now we're going to add that without it. Shouty, you the weirdo. With it. 
Now, this compressor has a lot of the stuff chosen for us. On the attack time, uh, you want a slow enough attack time to where the initial transients get through, and they're not really affecting the compressor that much normally. And then set your release time for the time of the song, and I usually use a ratio of 3 to 1, 4 to 1, and then uh, that should get you in the ballpark, and then you can adjust it based on, on the song itself. Um, we'll do a whole ITL on just how to set up compressors for vocals soon. After this compressor, I just felt like um, I needed just a little more control, so just, let's just check out our buddy. This is optional, like closing in a nudist camp, closing optional. Just, just kind of smooths it out a little bit. I'm going to take this off for now, um, just because I want to show you something. Okay, now we can take those S's down a little bit with a de-esser. Or, what I like to do is I like to draw them down, so, so we'll... So what we'll do is... Uh, we'll, we'll expand it to where we, we, we really notice um, the S's really stand out, no S. Oh, there's an S. So we'll pull that back a little. And so... Okay. You with me so far? This is where you say, yeah, 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 Dave, Drew. Yeah, Dave. Okay, great. Just checking. Got to keep Drew awake sometimes. Um, now, as far as levels, um, we've got two choices. We can start by putting the loudest part of our vocal where we want it and then bring the low parts up, or we can put the low parts where we want it, bring the high parts down, or a combination. I tend to find a, a spot where the vocal just sits good in the track for me personally. It's a good starting spot. So let's pretend like, like this is sitting good. So what I would probably do is, uh, I would rough it in without even really listening to it. So let's pull, let's pull this up. This, I know this is probably jumping out a little bit at me. I like the shorties because that's the name of the song. So let's pull this back a little. Now on this one, we'll, a lot of times what I'll do is, is something like this. And here again, a lot of this is personal taste. I got I I've seen it done all which way so so now we've got uh Shouty you the weirdo Okay, you hear that? Let's hear it without it real quick. Shouty you the weirdo Shouty you the weirdo I won't say it's it's better or worse, but that's that's the that's the approach that you would take. Um if it were me personally, I probably wouldn't go as strong as I just did in the song because I, I like a little bit of dynamics. Uh, some people would probably go as strong as what you saw me do there. Now, let's, let's go into some effects and, and why we're choosing them. That vocal sounds good to me. So, like I said earlier uh, in an in a, in a episode, I can't remember what it was. It was either... Maybe I didn't say it at all, so I'll say it again. Sometimes I think of... Um, Panning allows me to go left and right, and I think of reverb allows me to pan front to rear. If someone is standing in the back of, gym, of, an, a, gym, of a gymnasium and yells at you, your ear is sophisticated enough to take into account all that information, and they know that person is far away, and then as it gets closer, the early reflections um, change. So let's try the, um, uh, this is like a little delay. Let's try that. Shouty, you the weirdo. Hear that? Okay, a little bit of that. That sounds good. Um, now this is a um, this is something that I made up that I use a lot to kind of get width. We're going to discuss. We're going to have a whole show on width at some point. Um, and uh, what I do is I take a delay unit. This one works good. Uh, our our BPMs are 138. Uh, if you'll notice, for some reason, this likes to be out of phase. Just a tiny bit of feedback, and um, I feed that into um, 
the plug in center and I remove pretty drastically the, the, the middle information and uh, this preset uh, was inspired by Dylan Dresdo who made me promise I wouldn't give it away but sorry Dylan uh, I modified it so I can give it away no, nah, Dylan didn't say that. Dylan shares everything. This is kind of a cool thing. Um, the original harmonizer had a little quirk that it was very unstable. If you'll notice, this is blinking, uh, no pitch shift, and um, uh, one cent pitch shift. So what I do is I deselect it from being um, um, left and right chain together. So the, my left side I'm doing this, now my right side I'm doing just the opposite. I'm blinking from 99 up so to 100. So when one's going sharp the other one's doing something flat and it gives me a pretty cool vibe. So this I'm not even using. So let's hear how that sounds. Shouting you the weirdo Shouty, you the weirdo. Shouty, you the weirdo. Cool, huh? The harmonizer kind of widens it. The center takes it out of the center, and then the delay kind of keeps that neat little vibe going. Um, you'll like that. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add a little reverb. Shouty, you the weirdo. Shouty, you the weirdo. The way you do that, the bitch got a... Shouty, you the weirdo. Shouty, you the weirdo. The way you do that dance, gotta. Does this ever happen to you where you hit Pro Tools and it doesn't go back to where you started? What is that, Apple N? Just N. Just N, yeah, just N. Here we go. So now, now it sets us back. Shouty, you the weirdo. All right. That sounds good. Now let's check them all three together. Cool. So we've gotten a little width, we've made it a little wider, we've put it in a space, we've made that space kind of wide. If, if, if you, for you Bricasti fans, that's large hall on the Bricasti. And then uh, a little bit, of, a couple of delays. The issue of how much effects to use, it's a personal taste thing. Uh, and, and, as, and as we said earlier, that amount of effects can be a fad thing. We're in a, a delay laden, pretty dry, pretty wet phase of, uh, of the music world. In the early 90s it was just the opposite. No reverb on anything. And if, you, if you want to get your vocal drier then the, then the approach we used with the, the, the dual 910s and that delay, uh, that would be an approach to take on a drier vocal. If you wanted to vocal a little wetter then, then use more reverbs. But for dry I like choruses, pitch shifts, and uh, delays. We touched on this earlier. If, if, you're, if you're doing a rock song, you probably want a, a little less reverb, keep the vocal up front, because the vocal has to compete with a lot of mid-range information, so we'll cut off a little more low end of that than we normally would. And then this vocal has to do both. It has to compete with live drums, if you remember. Uh, the original session we showed you it has to compete with program drums, so we did kind of a full range version of this. I've talked to some friends of mine and we're probably going to have uh, a couple of guys that, that are going to give you some really good pointers on pretty soon about how they record and track vocals, their, uh, their chain, the equipment they use and why. So look for that in the future and then um, uh, a little later on uh, maybe episode two or three from now, we'll get into kind of something that I think is kind of fun and placing vocals and how you sit those in the mix, that sort of thing. i I got to find a song we can use as, a, as an example because, um, like I said earlier in another episode, most of the things I do are, are, are records and people you know, have to get permission and all that, but... Uh, these guys have just been really so sweet about letting me use this track. I really appreciate it. So, 